Good morning and good evening to our US participants. Uh, it's great to have you guys join us and it's a fantastic opportunity for uh, Gail and Growth Asia to share with you the key trends from health tech, aka digital health in Asia Pacific. Um, my name is Julian de Salaberry. I am the CEO and co-founder of Gail and Growth Asia. Uh, Gail and Growth Asia is the, the only uh, boutique specialist in digital health, health tech uh, in the region. And we specialize in accelerating timeline to ROI for anyone defining a digital health strategy and executing it. Um, we uh, have built a unique analytics platform called Health Tech Alpha, uh, logo behind me, um, which powers all of the analysis that we share with you this morning. And any further information, please reach out. Um, in that database, we have uh, cataloged uh, the majority of startups in the region. Uh, and we have um, defined uh, their attributes down to their financial and funding, but also right down to their building blocks and what makes them tick and what makes them create value in the space. So we've got about 30 minutes to cover off the key trends. The um, report will be available online uh, soon after this webinar, uh, but I'll just take you through a few of the key trends this morning. Um, feel free to ask questions using the, the Q&A button on the bottom of your screens. Uh, the team is uh, live and ready to answer your questions as we progress. Um, I will try to take questions at the end, but I can't promise because we've got quite a lot to get through in the next 30 minutes. Um, so let me just switch to the slides first of all to help us uh, or help me certainly share with you the information we have. Okay, so first things first, um, this uh, is the Q1 report uh, of our um, analysis throughout the year. Um, we do two very formal uh, published reports in uh, written format that you can download on the uh, half year point, which is in early July, and on the full year point, which is in early January. And this is a, uh, well, I have a copy in my hands of the 2018 full year report, which you can download for free. Um, uh, on our website, and I recommend you do so, so you get some of the contrast of some of the information I'm going to share with you this morning. Um, so, um, looking at the information, uh, and it's an exciting moment really for uh, health tech in Asia Pacific. Um, we closed out last year at a record-breaking year at 6.3 billion US dollars of total dollar funding uh, invested in digital health in the region across some 294 deals. Um, Q1 uh, 2019 closes ahead of the 1 billion or certainly um, above the 1 billion mark again, which is roughly speaking a $70 million uptick on year on year of Q1 2018. So another record uh, for the, uh, the region. Uh, and for the first time, uh, a Q1 in Asia Pacific that closes ahead of the US. So again, confirming Asia Pacific as the second largest ecosystem in the world. Uh, and uh, certainly showing that it is vibrant and very attractive to both investors and to, and to corporates. Uh, worth noting, if you look at the graph, that uh, Q2 last year saw Asia Pac ahead of the US again, uh, and, but the large outlier contributing to that particular performance was, if you recall, the IPO of uh, Ping and Good Doctor. Um, let's spend some time looking at some of the key trends behind that information. Um, incidentally, the data you've got for the US is the latest data. Uh, and the source for that is Rock Health. So if we look at some of the key trends um, to give you an idea. So we're looking at 60 deals, which I think is pretty much on par with the US. Um, but really, we're looking at fewer deals. So if you look at the trend uh, of Q1 deals, uh, 2016 was a, a record in 91. And we've seen a gradual slide down from 91. Um, but that's not really in any concern to us because we are seeing investment dollar size growing. And so effectively, we're seeing the average um, uh, dollar investment per deal uh, increasing. Uh, so 60, 60 deals, uh, the average deal size has increased to just shy of $18 million. Uh, that's an average, but to give you a flavor, uh, which is roughly speaking 33% uptick in average deal size uh, year on year. Uh, so that's the good news because it's really showing uh, a continued maturity in the uh, health tech ecosystem in Asia Pacific. Uh, as was uh, illustrated at the end of 2018, but we're starting to continue to see that trend in, in, in Q1 uh, of 2019. Um, digging down a little bit deeper and looking at um, this particular chart, which is a 100% stack bar chart, and it's really trying to show you the proportion uh, of a volume 
uh, of deals comparing uh, early stage, which is the gray side of the bar, to growth stage, which is the, uh, the green side, so the late stage and exit stage, which is the other two colors on this chart. Um, now, you'll note, of course, that from a volume perspective, we've seen a very steady proportion of that over the last three quarters. Uh, that's good news. It means that uh, from a deal uh, transaction perspective, we're seeing a healthy number of deals uh, in the early stage level, which is obviously going to start feeding the growth stage. And we are still continue to see the continued appetite of uh, investors for, for growth stage deals. So that, that's, that's the good news. Um, certain concerns that we're starting to see uh, from our own analysis. The first one is that if you look at it from a dollar perspective, uh, early stage deals are occupying less share than they were uh, year on year, uh, in fact, quite significantly less. Uh, and so we're a little concerned about what that means in terms of um, sufficient maturity in the early stage deals uh, to continue feeding the growth stage part of the pipeline. Um, conversely, though, uh, we are seeing, therefore, more dollars going into growth stage deals. In fact, it's up 10% year on year. Uh, and we're seeing, therefore, um, growth stage deals occupy as much as 60 plus percent of total dollars uh, de de deployed into, into deals in health tech in the region. Uh, so that's a little concerning from our perspective because we're going to start seeing, I think, an imbalance between uh, the pipeline early stage deals feeding into growth stage deals. Um, exciting uh, and of note, and of course, exit deals uh, are growing in size. Um, we're talking about MA and IPOs here. Um, similarly to some of the trends you're seeing in the US where the IPO trend is, uh, is growing, uh, we're seeing less on the IPO at this stage. We're seeing more on the M&A side. And we're seeing an uptick in that. So five deals um, this quarter versus uh, the, uh, the previous uh, quarters. Um, and uh, most of those deals are M&A transactions between health tech uh, ventures uh, as opposed to, to corporate um, uh, activity. So um, uh, the beginnings, I guess, probably early stage, but the beginnings of some consolidation in the space. Uh, as health tech startups um, uh, ventures start recognizing the fact that they need to bolt on capabilities that exist in, in another venture. Um, so uh, a trend we will continue watching very carefully, uh, particularly at the early stage level. Um, if, we, if we then look at uh, the share of, of deal uh, across um, uh, the countries, um, China um, continues to occupy the lion's share of, deal, uh, of deals. Um, but um, we are deliberately, deliberately, deliberately and provocatively saying that it's stagnating, whereas India's plummeting. Now, that's certainly very interesting to look at. Uh, if you look at China specifically, um, the slowing domestic economy is starting to take its effect. We are starting to see a handbrake. Um, not massively, because we're still seeing um, China strong in terms of total dollar deployed in health tech in Asia Pacific, but we have seen a decrease of about 6% of the total dollar spent or invested, sorry. Um, and, and so um, that, that domestic slowdown and, and some of the new rules that the Chinese government are bringing out is starting to have its impact on general uh, degrees of comfort, I guess, in terms of investing in, uh, in, in China. Um, that said, the velocity in China has been maintained by three mega deals. We classify mega deals as deals in excess of 100 million USD. Uh, and all three mega deals um, in uh, the region were all executed in China. Um, the converse of that is India. Uh, India, which still, from a volume perspective, occupies a certain percentage, uh, sizable percentage, sorry, of total deals executed. Um, it had a, what I would describe as a malaise during Q1 of 2019, a serious plummeting of deal activity. Uh, dollar value is down 40% year on year or thereabouts, and total volume deal is down 60% year on year. That's on the back of a very strong year in 2018. Um, but so we're starting to see some of the uh, issues that we were outlining at the end of the, at the end of last year or the beginning of this year uh, take effect. Uh, you know, there's growing, continued concern around the angel tax. That's this uh, tax office in India uh, uh, rule that they will tax based on future value of a startup, uh, leaving um, uh, both uh, investors and, uh, and startups um, at risk. Uh, and some erratic regulations as well. Uh, most of you probably would have seen the impact of some of the new e-commerce regulations on Amazon's bet. And I think people are starting to, or investors are looking at India wondering what's, what's the next shoe to drop in relation to, to healthcare. So we'll see. Um, positively though, in terms of how do we, how did Q1 certainly break or breach that one billion barrier? 
Um, South Korea, eight deals. Uh, so South Korea, very strong. And we're seeing a lot of emphasis on medical diagnostics and on research. So that sophistication uh, of the health tech ecosystem um, uh, taking hold in South Korea as well. Um, and then, of course, very strongly, the rest of Asia. Uh, so the Asia part that's not uh, listed by country name in this pie chart. 22% uh, increase uh, in, in dollar value invested in health tech. Uh, so we're seeing um, uh, the rest of the region really starting to roar uh, as we were predicting uh, at the end of 2018. Um, as, um, and we'll look at those, those deals in a bit more detail in, a, in, a, in the forthcoming slides. A very quick look at mega deals. I don't plan to spend much time on that. There's more detail in the report itself that will be published after this webinar. Um, but to give you a size, certainly, of, um, of, of uh, an idea of the value uh, of, that, um, uh, of those deals. Okay, uh, if we look at um, the interesting part, the one that we get, the question we get from most corporates uh, we talk to, for example, and that is, what are some of the solutions and their attractiveness as it relates to um, dollar as well as deal volume? Um, so what we're seeing is certainly a continued trend. As you look at our 2018 report, you'll see we, we track this by volume and by dollar uh, over a number of quarters. Uh, this is only giving you the Q1 picture. But what we're seeing is health management solutions, online marketplaces, and medical diagnosis continue to occupy the top three uh, positions. Um, the slight tweak though in Q1 is that medical diagnosis has shot up to the number one position, uh, attracting a total of 280 million US dollars um, across some 10 deals. Um, and um, of note, and something we pointed out at the end of 2018, uh, research category, um, of capabilities is continuing to attract dollars. Slight switch with uh, with population health management to, to sit from fifth to six, but still, again, a demonstration of, uh, of increased sophistication in solutions we're starting to see innovated in the Asia Pacific. Um, the other thing worth pointing out in terms of uh, that link to sophistication is patient solutions. Uh, we are really starting to see some very interesting b 2 b to c type patient solutions. Uh, the model still continues to be one of operating through a, a, a large corporate uh, in order to monetize a patient solution, but we're starting to see some really strong patient solutions in that space. And we'll come back to that in a minute as we deep dive into, um, uh, into uh, diabetes. <clears throat> so um, looking at uh, some of the noteworthy deals that are driving these categories and driving uh, the dollar value that we referred to, um, uh, first one, this is a, uh, what we call significant deals. In other words, we talked about mega deals in a couple of slides ago. This is about uh, noteworthy deals and, and therefore deals that aren't uh, at 100 million plus mark, but certainly are trying to illustrate very well what's happening in the, part of the rest of the region. I won't go through each of these. There's a lot more data in, in our report. Suffice to say that uh, it's a fairly broad set of deals in terms of their category. Um, Picking on Halodoc very quickly, Indonesian founded um, and also um, the winner of the 2018 Galen Growth Asia Most Innovative Health Tech Startup uh, Award. Uh, it has very recently raised $65 million as part of its Series B. Uh, this is a venture that is focused on uh, script fulfillment and delivery, lab results, EHR and hospital management systems. So a little bit of um, Pig and Good Doctor type platform, um, but based in Indonesia and growing very fast. Uh, so congratulations to the Hellodoc team for their $65 million Series B. Um, similar type of value proposition, although much more monoline, 1MG. Uh, some of you probably noticed this platform, India Born, uh, operates only in India, uh, and it's very much focused on script fulfillment. Uh, just raised Series D at 35 million. Um, small Series D, but for India, that is certainly a significant amount of, uh, of money for, for, for a Series D. Um, so certainly good to see that those um, value offerings to patients, to consumers, um, are, are, are generating value. Um, and on the whole, those two platforms are doing so direct to consumer. So it's, it's more of a B2C than it is a B2B2C model. So that's encouraging. For us, it's good to see that investors are backing platforms that are focused on B2C offerings, but it's also excellent to see some B2C offerings able to monetize and monetize in a convincing way. So, so, so uh, we'll keep a close eye on, on that going forwards. Uh, far more detail on these, uh, each of these uh, in, in the report, so I'm not planning to go through each of these now. 
Um, worth looking at partnerships. Um, we talked about partnerships at the end of the last year as it relates to their contribution or their role as a key driver in, uh, in the growth of the ecosystem. Um, as you know, large corporations do bring about uh, both validation as well as uh, scale for, for health tech startups. Um, and so um, the two that were announced in Q1, uh, again, Big Pharma taking a position within, uh, or Big Pharma, sorry, Pharma Co is taking a position uh, with, a, uh, with a health tech startup to actually extend their value proposition within market. Um, so we start, we're continuing to see that um, um, ex excitement, I guess, and that momentum from, big, from, from Pharma Co's into the space. Nova Nordisk, uh, most of you will probably know Nova Nordisk, Danish Pharma Co, completely focused on diabetes. Uh, they have uh, signed a partnership agreement with Health and Sync, uh, which is a Taiwanese startup, uh, and with a view to uh, launching the uh, Health and Sync um, B2C product uh, in Japan, uh, focusing on a diabetes market in Japan. So, so early days, uh, just been signed, but an exciting time for, for Ed Deng at Health to Sync and his team. And good to see Nova Nordisk starting to take uh, visible positions. Um, much more, let's say, local, let's say. We're looking at India. Uh, Cipla, which is a well-known, probably, I think, uh, one of the largest uh, Indian uh, generic manufacturers. Uh, so Pharmaco, again. Uh, has uh, signed uh, an agreement with uh, with Wealthy Therapeutics, which is a well-known, uh, prominent uh, health tech startup uh, in India. Um, and uh, the, the, the partnership is very much focused on diabetes and cardiovascular. So it's a slightly broader chronic disease uh, partnership um, and, and is very focused on India at this stage. Uh, the interesting part of that particular relationship is that Cipla actually also took um, a stake in, in, in in wealthy therapeutics, uh, they invested 1.5 million uh, for an 11 percent stake. Um, so, uh, um, interesting to see how a partnership is accompanied with, with, with an investment stake. Um, we expect to see more of these going forwards. Um, not every corporation is um, um, vocal about what they do. Um, so, we really are only in a position to share with you in a public domain uh, the partnerships that have been uh, published um, so as to not breach confidentiality. Uh, but I, I, we do expect to see more of these going forward. Um, very quick, as we're talking about diabetes, I just wanted to flag at the fact that um, we're undertaking a fairly uh, in-depth review of uh, diabetes uh, applicable health tech uh, platforms across the region. Um, very keen to understand what that actually looks like. Uh, largely because our initial uh, analysis of this space revealed that um, despite um, probably about half the population by 2030 being afflicted by diabetes in Asia Pacific, um, only some three to 4% of health tech startups have a dedicated value proposition to diabetes. And what I mean by that is they, are o they only solely exist for uh, disease management of diabetes. Um, so that's slightly concerning, but of course we are very much aware that there are many other platforms that are either doing multi-chronic uh, disease uh, offerings uh, or have um, a capability solution that actually can be leveraged by another provider to the diabetes space. And so it's a much more complex web. Uh, so we're undertaking a bit of analysis going forward, uh, which we will reveal the details of later on, uh, probably in Q2, early Q3. Uh, to really give a good snapshot of what's happening in diabetes uh, in, in health tech, but it's certainly uh, an exciting innovative space. Conscious of time, so uh, we'll leap into uh, our final piece of analysis, um, which um, uh, we will uh, reveal certainly, and we do in the report that this is borrowed from Rock Health, so some of you more. Um, um, Astute people will, will recognize that. Essentially what we've done is we've borrowed their framework uh, in order to assess uh, for ourselves uh, and for yourselves, therefore, uh, how frothy uh, or bubbly, let's say, the uh, health tech ecosystem is in Asia Pacific. Um, really important to uh, look at these uh, as individual pieces uh, and to look at these in the context of the information that I shared with you, as well as a 2018 report, so that you've got some longitudinal data as to where you look at it. Um, so six particular parameters. Uh, the first one um, is their hype in the ecosystem superseding 
or getting ahead of actual business fundamentals. Um, we um, look at this very simply, which is through our day-to-day -day interactions with startup CXOs, um, we're very aware of the fact that they are uh, figuring out the ecosystem for themselves uh, and having to build organically to uh, biz dev, to, to align with regulations and to scale um, you know, within a very complex industry, which most of you will be familiar with. Um, what we are seeing, and I think you can see that in some of the data I showed you earlier on of, of growth stage type uh, startups, we are seeing CXOs, entrepreneurs moving towards sustainable business models, business models that are able really to um, grow uh, almost despite uh, funding. Of course, funding is vital to them, but I mean, if, if we end up in a situation where funding starts slowing and drying up for whatever reason, I'm confident that a number of the um, Series A post uh, startups that we are tracking, we do have day-to-day -day interaction with, uh, will be able to continue growing under their own steam. Um, so all that say, really, we believe that is a, uh, a not frothy. Um, in other words, the business fundamentals are clearly uh, reflected in the way in which we look at the, the system and the way investors look at the system. Second parameter, high cash burns. Um, are we seeing higher frequency and, and of, 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 of fundraising and, and therefore cash burn um, being somewhat illogical to growth or uh, let's say out of kilter with growth. Uh, the answer is not. Um, you'll see in our 2018 report, we track very closely mean and, and median deal size as well as time timing between uh, series A to series B, for example, or investment events. Um, what we're not seeing is um, uh, an increase in, in time span, in average time span between investment rounds. Um, but we are seeing, of course, uh, startups raising cash uh, reasonably quickly. In other words, when they do set about raising funding, uh, it's a reasonably short timeline uh, because there is availability of capital um, and, and, and there are a clear understanding to investors of, uh, around uh, growth needs. Uh, so that's all good news, all very healthy. Um, but again, um, I wouldn't describe it as high cash burn rates. I would call it uh, normal and commensurate with the maturity of the ecosystem, therefore not frothy. Uh, the third one is unclear exit pathways. Um, it's a difficult one to, to assess in any detail, this one, because we don't really have a very fully fledged IPO market um, in, uh, in Asia Pac as it comes to health techs startups found in Asia Pac reaching IPO. Of course, uh, we're all very aware of the previously mentioned and good doctor in uh, which I played in Hong Kong uh, last year. That said, um, the MA uh, side of things is probably a more reliable uh, measure, uh, and we are seeing an increasing number of those. And I mentioned that a little bit earlier on. Uh, so there's an uptick in MA activity, uh, both between um, health tech startups or ventures uh, and uh, from, from corporate. Um, and we are starting our sales scale in Growth Asia getting increasing into conversations with, uh, with corporates who are looking to take, uh, take stakes um, uh, to, to, in order to actually give themselves a first mover advantage. So again, um, not particularly clearly easily definable, but certainly from the indicators we're seeing and the growth in uh, exit as a percentage of total deals, uh, I would describe that as healthy and therefore not frothy. Uh, fourth uh, parameter, uh, is there a surge of cash for new investors? Um, this is a slightly interesting uh, dimension this one Asia Pacific, largely because other than one or two, there are no dedicated health tech investors in, in Asia Pacific. Pretty much every investor in, in Asia Pacific into health tech is a crossover investor or an investor with multidisciplinary uh, investment mandates. And so health tech or digital health is one of their mandates. Uh, we're seeing a growing number of those, certainly, as the appetite grows for, for the space, as the, uh, the risk uh, perception lowers. Um, and so to be totally fair, um, we've described that as moderately frothy uh, and we're keeping a close eye on the difference between uh, repeat investors as well as uh, brand new investors in the space and our H1 report uh, will uh, we'll look at that um, as it did in our 2018 year end report. Um, are we seeing high valuations which look completely decoupled from fundamentals? Uh, no is the answer. I think um, there are very few unicorns um, in Asia Pacific full stop, unlike the US. Um, and the few that do exist are, are China unicorns, uh, which are, uh, I'm sure you'll agree with me, uh, in very much aligned with demographics, uh, government policy, uh, as well as the amount of funding. Now we'll see the 
uh, how the economic slowdown in China translates going forwards, but certainly from what we've seen so far, um, it all sounds uh, and looks very stable. Uh, we are seeing investment rounds growing in sensible size in the rest of uh, uh, the region at a steady frequency. So again, to be fair, we're calling it moderately uh, frothy and really with an emphasis on China and we'll keep an eye on that one very closely. Uh, final one is, do we see any fraud or misuse of funds? Um, we are not seeing any signs of any exuberance or excitement or garden parties, etc., cetera, uh, going on in, in the region driven by, by health tech founders, etc. So I think everybody is still being very uh, calm, cool and calculated and investing every hard-earned dollar in growing their business. And we've not seen any scandals in the region. So we've not had a Theranos in the region uh, and long may that continue. Um, so overall, uh, will we be drinking cappuccino or latte going forward? Well, I think for the foreseeable future, we'll all be drinking uh, some lattes um, in, in the morning uh, as we keep a close eye on the funding deployment within the region. Um, that is it from us in terms of the snapshot headlines uh, for the, uh, the report for Q1. Uh, the team are responding to some of your questions. I've got probably two, three minutes, but I just wanted to reiterate the fact that uh, this is just a snapshot, high-level um, uh, set of indicators um, taken from the final report. We will make the final report available uh, after this webinar uh, for, for you to, to, to download and read at your own leisure. Um, and of course, a copy of this webinar um, will be sent to you automatically uh, by the, uh, the webinar platform we are using. Um, I think uh, I've got a couple of minutes if there are any questions. Uh, the team says no, all questions have been answered. Um, give it a minute just in case anybody wants to ask a question. No open questions. Okay, well in that case, uh, who? Go for it, Kenny. We're listening. You have to use the Q&A uh, setting, uh, Kenny. Okay, Kenny, uh, your question was, do you think we will see more amalgamation of insure tech, I guess, and health tech solutions? Um, <clears throat> it's an interesting question, that one. I don't think, I, I don't expect, or we, sorry, again, grocery, don't expect to see much of that in the near future. It's seldom a point of conversation um, between, uh, between ourselves and CXOs. Uh, and it's certainly seldom a point of conversation with other insurance players or, or, or with uh, healthcare incumbents. Um, I think from an amalgamation perspective, to take your, your topic further, I think we'll probably see some more uh, consolidation um, starting to build up between uh, platforms that you'd call adjacent. So, you know, a telehealth platform potentially acquiring a, um, um, you know, script delivery type platform in order to be able to offer a broader um, uh, value proposition to patients. Um, at the moment, um, I'm sure you're all aware, and certainly we are because we track uh, thousands of health tech startups in the region. Um, we're seeing a lot of duplication. Um, now they are differentiated either because they're in a different market or differentiated because they're in a different city uh, or because they add a little bit of different uh, something to their, but if you look at their primary capability, they're very similar. And so I think it's going to make sense to start some, seeing some of these things uh, amalgamate um, and, uh, or aggregate, I think. Um, but I think it's going to require a catalyst to do that. Uh, and I'm not sure where that comes from at this stage. Um, Remember, I think a lot of players out there are looking for, for the data as opposed to necessarily the, the core capability. Uh, and, and we're seeing um, a lot of hunger to get more data. Uh, hope that answers your question, Kenny. Thank you for that. We are slowly running out of time. Okay, so we've answered the question about China. Yeah, no, absolutely. So we've done a fully uh, comprehensive, in-depth uh, study of the China ecosystem. As you can imagine, most of the investors and um, corporations we work with uh, have uh, a strong interest in China. And so we've had to um, have taken the time to analyze a full ecosystem. Uh, and so we have a very good understanding of where the innovation nodes are. Uh, and it's fascinating to see that um, 
uh, certainly Beijing is is the lead. I think if I'm correct, all uh, team, I think Beijing is what twice the size of Shanghai in terms of sheer number of health tech startups founded in uh, uh, in, in, in Beijing. So uh, it's a very exciting space, but uh, contrary to all of the corporates sitting in Shanghai, um, most uh, a great deal of the innovation goes on in Beijing, which is very exciting. And uh, Dario, our CRO, spent um, a, a number of days in Beijing very recently um, engaging with some really interesting platforms over there. So one last question, and then we'll wrap up. Uh, what do I think about e-pharmacy business and its growth in APAC? Um, well, I think it's a, it's a necessary need, uh, particularly in some markets where um, access to, to pharmacies um, is um, a challenge. Um, and so we'll start seeing an increasing number of these um, uh, platforms um, you know, grow not only in terms of existence, but also grow in terms of scale. Um, you know, Hello Doc, 1MG, uh, et cetera, all the two that, that, I, that I mentioned, but there are many, many more. Um, the caveat, though, uh, is, is on their scale, let's say, is how will governments respond uh, by, uh, through regulations? Um, you look at our 2018 report, uh, we did make a brief mention of this, but uh, in, in India, we're starting to see some response. Um, Largely, to be honest, because of, uh, of uh, uh, pressure on the government from um, the independent uh, pharmacists uh, in, in, in India who are feeling the, uh, the erosion of, of revenue on their business. And um, uh, India is currently heading towards a general election. So uh, we are seeing a little more, let's call it populist type actions from, from politicians. Um, uh, but in, in China, you, you kind of get the other, the other way around, uh, where you can fi quietly buy Viagra on JD.com. Uh, and so regulations are, pre are pretty lacking. So um, we're watching this with great interest because it is um, a, a logical business model. It's one that will grow through uh, the value add. So if you look at HelloDoc, for example, it's doing lab results um, uh, through, through the same, same sort of platform. Um, but I think the uh, government regulations in this space will be a, a strong determinant as to uh, how much further they scale. Any final questions? We're done. Okay. Thank you very much for everybody. Um, and uh, hopefully you'll find you found this uh, a good taste of what uh, has happened in Q1, an exciting quarter for health tech uh, in Asia Pacific. And so I think answering the fundamental question, uh, it's looking very uh, strong for 2019. And um, we should see 2019, therefore, be a good, strong match for 2018's performance. And um, that's it. So thank you very much. Have a great day and a great evening. Bye.